Uh, welcome, um, Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams. And we have asked some of the questions about connections between spirituality and reparations, uh, and also responsibility of spiritual institutions and communities, um, as well as healing and spiritual um, um, rituals for reparations. <laughs> All that, huh? <laughs> I, I got to listen. I was in, in and out of a meeting, and so I was uh, listening here and there. I just want to, uh, first of all, just thank Dante for uh, what they're saying and, and uh, expressing. I, um, you know, I, I think that uh, the question of reparations is can only be a spiritual uh, conversation. I think one of the missteps we've had over the years is to try to uh, situate reparations as a political conversation or an economic conversation and uh, that it is only going to be received and understood as a spiritual conversation, a spiritual uh, reckoning. Um, and I think that the human heart uh, yearns for that. I think even the human heart that is intoxicated, as you uh, beautifully said, Dante, on power uh, yearns for that because the emptiness of wielding that power is also apparent to anyone that uh, takes a look. And I think one of the mistakes that we can make, and, and I would you know, caution against it, is to try to look at the people that are on the most extreme ends of things. And that's not who you need to worry about. It's just like politics in America. It's like, what are the independents? What are the people in the middle doing? The people that um, you know, have some, have some um, sway potential in them. Uh, uh, and, and rather than look, looking at their extremes. So I want to say that anything I say is referring not to people that live on the far ends of the extremes, the people that are, I want to say, system makers, um, structural um, the bridge makers, right? They're, they're creating the structures and they're invested in the structures in overt ways versus what I think of as people, uh, and the, the way that I often talk about how whiteness itself works as a a sociopathological cultural ontology that it uh, induces, it's either seduces, induces, or reduces everyone, but um, many white people are for the most part actually seduced or, or induced into it. And induced is a particularly important um, frame because to be induced is somewhat invisible and white privilege and white supremacy works most handily when it is invisible. And, the, and therefore, the surfacing of it uh, and the ways in which not just that it causes harm, which I think is also a place that we've sat in a long time and have conversations, the situating the conversation in the way that it causes harm to the people that are oppressed and marginalized, et cetera. I think exactly right, Dante, like it invokes a kind of contempt. It also reinforces the notion of the inferiority of those peoples. Uh, and so uh, when people are not committed to supremacy, white supremacy as a, as a uh, formal ideological participation, but rather the subtle ways that human beings judge each other all the time, I think the, that the strategy has to be something that unseats the hidden and implicit bias that allows people to continue to participate in things, you know, and there's many ways in which progressives point, like, you know, scream and shout at like all the horrible ways that people that are marginalized are suffering. And I have to say, I'm like, mostly what that does is tell most of the people like, yeah, that's right, they're inferior. It wouldn't be like that. Uh, they wouldn't be in that position if only they fill in the blank um, because they are the, the structures of white supremacy and the machinations of white supremacy are invisible. Uh, they're invisible, as invisible to white people as they are to um, many people of color. So, and that internalize oppression and, and, and therefore participate in be, being gatekeepers to, to um, those, those forces. So anything that, um, any strategy I think that is gonna be um, viable and lasting um, and not temporal, uh, is something that's going to call forth the liberation of white peoples themselves from the same structures uh, that bind them by revealing to them 
the, the ways in which it binds them, uh, not the ways in which they are complicit. I mean, I think that works for some people, but at the end of the day, most people are most moved uh, by their own um, self-interest. And which is why people will politically make uh, votes and, and concessions that are against their material self-interest in the interest of their I identity self-interest. And so we, we watch that a lot. And a lot of times we try to have these conversations that, you know, with, with uh, uh, poor working class white folks uh, without understanding the hierarchy of values that identity will trump a material resource every single time, right? Make identity is existential, therefore it's spiritual. And the, the identity as a, as a white person as a person that is better situated and somehow better regardless of their current state is something that's very, very seductive, very, very seductive. So if you don't un like crack open the way in which that is also has that person trapped, um, I think it's very difficult to have a, a lasting um, and, and spiritually deep a call for reconciliation and 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 the desire for liberation from from those patterns, um, because they, they they appear to benefit people and situate people in in better locations in in their in the social strata, if they look only externally, um, and I and I think we are you know our political reality shows that we're at the at the edges of what we're going to be able to accomplish just by p pulling on people's, you know, better angels, if you will. And so uh, calling people into the truth of like, you are trapped in this, uh, you know, you've been hoodwinked and bamboozled, as Malcolm would say. And, and led and, astray. And let it, and let astray that you are trapped, that you are kept from your full existence, that you are kept from your full capacity, your full uh, thriving as a human being, that in fact you have been induced into uh, a, a way of being that is, and I've, I've been really leaning in on this conversation, it surprised some researchers I was talking to last week, they were struck by the truth of it. You can go and look it up in a medical dictionary and ask any, any psychologist about it, and if they think, think about it, with any sense of um, objectivity, it is, becomes very clear that the construct of whiteness is a sociopathy, sociopathy that it induces people away from their basic human, and uh, in, their innate human capacities, a fair connection and compassion. And the problem is, is that we can't really limit those entirely just to the, the, the so-called other and we, um, when you name that, people drop experience. And if you can name that and, and, and give language and narrative to it, people will touch into the recognition of their loss, the loss of the, own, the, of the wholeness of themselves, just amongst themselves, not, right? Because the uh, oppression, white oppression was perfected amongst white people before it was introduced in uh, put upon burden on on other people, other people. They did it to themselves in the class or lo location first. So I think that this the conversation of reparations is a conversation as much about reckoning, self self reckoning, as it is about and and spiritual and liberation, as it is about anything else. And the and the fact of the. Uh, you know, Dave and I talked about this briefly before uh, the call, that the fact of the, the material um, resourcing and the, and the right, writing, the upwriting, I would say, of things in that regard um, must be coupled with an, a, a real understanding of how it is a spiritual uprighting. Otherwise, we end up capitulating to, uh, you know, the, the money as deity Right and the abs the absolving of all things, and uh, that that is not the message that we want to set because it reifies the 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 paradigm, um, and and it reifies it most especially because the because it is white white bodied people that are holding access to to that the the grand deity of money, uh, and so you don't want to reassert power in in the form of money. 
And so the reparations has to be something that is more than money, even, even as it, is, it does have that concrete, re, that concrete um, effect of um, reconciling or helping to rectify material imbalances and in the imbalances that's caused by material resources, but it must be imbued with an understanding that it is also a spiritual uh, energy currency that is being um, communicated through the resource of money. So something um, I would suggest comes with, comes with it. It's not just like, hey, I paid my way and I'm done. Um, and I've, you know, I've, I'm, I'm okay now, but um, some kind of um, vow, you know, in the way that all spiritual traditions do, we, we're committing to something greater in that act.